Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to Seal Mall Type Run of EV Emerald. Last time, we got the 6th Gym Badge, leading us with our next objective, proceeding south towards Mount Pyre in Lily Cove City. Also, I decided that no, Kecleon doesn't count as not a race steel type. It's a roadie, not part of the band. So yeah, on this portion of Route, is it 120? 121? One of those. It's always raining. And there are some NPCs here that take full advantage of that. We'll find them in a... We'll, we'll battle them in a bit. Oh, by the way, since I got Fly, of course I had to give Fly to a certain Pokémon, but I didn't want to give it to Skarmory since it's a shitty move, so, uh... Meet Guldicott the Wingle. It's a Star Trek reference. So, first trainers that take advantage of the rain. One of these trainers uses a cast form. And because it's in the rain, it's going to start off in its rain form, and it will just spam Thunder. Or is it Manetric that spams Thunder? I think they both do. Either way, um, yeah, I want to get rid of Manetric as quickly as I can. Oh, come on! Fuck off me, Netric. That was cheap. Fine, be that way, bitch. Fuck you, cast form. I hope you like that, because this is gonna hurt. Eat shit. Anyways, we'll be right back and then head off to the Pokemon Center. And we're back. I swear, the AI in this game can be so damn spiteful sometimes. Unfortunately for the AI, I'm even more spiteful. Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Waste my time. You're only delaying the inevitable. Down you go. Of course you did. Didn't save you, though.
Moving on. Pick this up. We'll take on this trainer. Oh, Sableye. This one. Yeah, go ahead. Waste my time, why don't you? Okay, you know what? Anytime a Pokemon uses Protect or de Detect to waste my time, I'm just going to hit the Speed Up button because... Otherwise, they're just going to prolong these videos way more than they should. Later in the game, the AI can get very obnoxious about spamming those moves. Yeah, I'm thinking of how annoying your fucking Sableye is. It's not even that difficult to take out, it's just... Waste my time with Detect. Pick up these Spearberries. Now we get down to this area. There's a couple of rangers. Ooh, let me see. I'll switch to Skarmory real quick. Because it's all grass types with these guys. Don't know if we needed that. Actually, I'm pretty sure we didn't, but whatever. We take those. Oh, there's a Cappy on here. Let's just take it out real quick. Oh, good that did ya. Level up! Okay, now we're almost out of the rain section. We have another one of these annoying rangers with the grass types. They're not even that good, they just... A lot of the trainers at the mid to late game portion are just kind of annoying, because they're not that satisfying to fight. Gotta keep fighting them, because, well, I want the experience and I want the money. 
<sighs> Man, what part of I'm recording a video do people on Discord not understand? I don't want to talk right now. That's another move that just annoys me. Because it doesn't really do any damage, it just wastes a turn. What's the point? Oh, and if you'd use it after the first turn, it fails automatically, so it's basically a wasted move slot for a cheap shot. It's just a shit move. This is a big reason why it's so annoying to fight trainers in the mid to late game, because they love time-wasting moves like Fake Out, Detect, Protect, and other shit like that. Yeah, no shit, you're the one that's gonna be rescuing if you annoy me anymore. That, we are finally out of this damn rain. Okay, is there an item over here? Nope, no, there's not. Moving on back over here. We got a hyper potion. We battle this asshole. Again, as I said in an earlier episode, bug maniacs are kind of redundant, because we've already got bug catchers. These guys don't do anything that the bug mania that the bug catchers don't already do. Their Pokemon aren't even necessarily stronger. You'd think they would be, because they're fully grown, whereas the bug catchers are kids, but nope, evidently not. There's a joke I can make about the move Water Sport, but I won't. That would be very immature. So yeah, a lot of trainers. But there's a gripe I kind of have about Gen 3. It's just how... It's how much the mid and late game routes in Hoenn just drag on and on. Anyways, yeah, you get berries from this woman. Daily. Speaking of that, I should probably check on the berries at the Berry Master's place. I'll do that in a bit. Again, Petcha Berries are not directly useful for me right now. I might be able to sell them, or perhaps if I end up hitting 10 subscribers on YouTube or 10 followers on Rumble by the time I upload the video for the Battle with Steven, then I might go back and do the contest with Steel Types. In that case, then yes, Petcha Berries will actually be useful. Especially since the Cuteness Contest are gonna be probably the most difficult just because of the movesets that I have available to me, which are not very good. Okay, there we go. And here we have a full heal. Now, we could just go right to Lily Cove City, but before we do that, I want to show you a couple things. First of all, there's a couple more trainers, but that's not the important thing.
Not gonna help you, Ninja. Swift never misses. Now on the note, you may wonder why have a Dictat Skarmory Aerial Ace. Well, part of that is because air, air Cutter, while it can miss, it does it does crit more often. So occasionally it'll do a lot more damage. But also, I may have to hold on to the TMs for uh, if I do the contest later. We'll see. Switch back to Black Sabbath here. And as you might have guessed, this is a Ruin Maniac. Which is your hint, although in this case it's the least subtle hint, because it's right there. One of the, of the legendary golems is here. In this case, it's the golem we actually want for this run, Registeel. And that's that battle over. Well, the entrance will show up later. Yeah, that's where we get Red Steel. And now we go back to the east, towards Lilico City. Do we want to use these guys? Yeah, I think we're good. And here we have our first encounter with a Hex Maniac. Which I believe this is the first encounter in the entire game with ghost types. Well, oh no, it isn't. Not counting Sableye. We've encountered Sableye several times. It's the first time we've encountered psychic type. Uh, well, rather, ghost types that are not Sableye. My mistake. Oh, fuck off. That's another one of those time-wasting moves. Okay, you know what? Fuck you. Just for that, I'm skipping through this turn. Oh, it inflicted curse. Yeah, every time a Pokemon does that, I'm just gonna skip the damn turn because it's annoying. I don't want the... I don't want every video from now on to be half a fucking hour because these trainers keep stalling. Spikes. Now there, there's a move that I might consider. Hmm. You know what? Why not? Yeah, we'll take spikes.
And here we have a bunch of berries. Okay, what do we find this time? Poochiana? Nah, I'll pass. That was what we came this way for. Good thing this isn't Gen 1 bind. For context, a lot of you probably know this, but those of you who haven't played the Gen 1 games, moves like bind, wrap, fire spin. Well, if you use them, not only could your opponent not switch, they couldn't attack either. They were incredibly cheap. Sure. Sure, whatever makes you sleep, whatever makes it easier to sleep at night. And there's Team Aqua. We're not going to Mount Pyre just yet though. First I think there's something down here. It might just be a secret base spot, we'll see. Yep, it's just secret base spot. Over here is a zinc. Increases your special defense. I don't know if I'm going to bother with it this time. Oh, and up there is the entrance to the Safari Zone. We'll come back here later in another episode. For now, we're going to battle these twins. These twins are a bit tougher than most. Because they start off with a Slacking and a Spinda. The Slacking hits like a truck, but Spinda, of course, likes to confuse you. I'm not that worried about the Slacking, though. Spinda needs to go down. Oh, it's just gonna put me to sleep instead. Okay, whatever. You know, for the longest time, I thought Spinda was a psychic type. Because that's what most of its moves are psychic moves. I mean, that's the other thing. Slacking is actually pretty fast as well. But it can only attack every other turn. So it can be fast when it wants to be. Moving on. And now these are breeders. If you battle them in a double battle, they'll only have three Pokemon each. But if you battle them individually, they'll have one. Fuck off, Audion. I have a feeling this is going to be one of the longer episodes. This, once again, the mid and late game in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald just drag on and on and on because of how long the routes are and how stall heavy a lot of the movesets that Pokemon have at this point in the game. There's a number of Pokemon out there where you have to wonder if their moveset was designed to make them more annoying than competitive. Like, I know that in Gen 1, most Pokemon were 
balanced around how they are when the AI uses them. I don't know if that's still the case in Gen 3. up. Just two more to go, and then I get a Metagross. Go away, Bananasaur. Now we battle the other one! Okay, this- I don't want this video to be half an hour long, let's just make this quick. Alright, now she's gone. No. Oh my god, don't- DON'T CALL ME JUST TO WASTE MY TIME! That's one of the things I really don't like about the change to the... Pokenav over to Emerald, is... In Ruby and Sapphire, it's just trainer's eyes. You just see a blinking icon telling you when a trainer is ready to battle you again. In this game, no, they can just call you whenever the hell they want. Which can make, well, if you're speedrunning Emerald, it makes it really, really annoying. Because it's basically entirely dependent on the RNG whether you're going to have a good time or not. We come down here, and we get ourselves Carbos. We'll be using those on Skarmori. Now we're back up here, and we can battle this chick. Well, too bad, it's what you got. You can go up here, and there's a couple of hidden mines. Okay, we go. One of them should be over here. It's a nugget. I think there's another one up here. Or... No, I think it's talking about this one. Fuck off, Poochietta! Like I was saying... We get a full heal. Now we come back down here. There's a couple of trainers. Depending on if we time this right, we can either double battle them or end up in single battles. Oh, shup it. Well, fuck off anyway. So, we'll run up in front of them, which makes them both turn around to face me. That way we can battle them both at once. Never tasted defeat, huh? Well, it was the first time for everything.
Oh, right. Down you go. One more level to go. No, we're not going to learn Iron Defense. And down you go. Battle's over. And they were guarding a max revive. Okay, that's actually worth battling them for. A couple more berries down here. And now, we finally make it to Lily Cove City. Let's heal up real quick. And depending on how much time I've already recorded for this episode, I'll see if I want to battle the rival before we stop or not. If not, we'll wait for the next episode. Alright, I think this episode's gone on long enough. These late game routes just take forever. So, if you like what you see, you be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out my Rumble page, and I will be seeing you all next time.